going to be interview one of three. Um, this is going to be our pre-war interview. And um, he has signed the consent form. And it is February 22nd, 2004. Okay, so I'm Shayna. I'm doing the pre-war interview. And today is actually the 23rd. No? Okay. So, um... We're going to need you for the camera to state your name and all of that. Well, my name is Ruben Steyer, and I was born in Poland. I was born on February the 28th, 1926, a little town called Klobutsk. It's the southwestern part of Poland. Okay. What was it like there? What were your parents like? What were their names? My uh, parents, my name was uh, Yitzhak. Isaac here. My mother's name was Handel, and I had uh, we were three brothers and three sisters. Uh, my memory goes back uh, way back. It goes back, I would say, about 75, 76 years ago. Uh, remembering not pleasant moments, not pleasant times, but a lot of sad and hard times. And the reason why I say that is because I go back when I was sitting, I remember when I was sitting on my father's lap on Passover, when we conducted the Seder, someone threw a rock through, it, through the window. It was a very common thing for kids, Polish kids, Christians that is, to throw rocks at. We were very, very good targets. I was brought up with it, I lived with it, but some commercials say I breathed that stuff. And things like this don't go away that easily, they stay with at least with me, they've been staying all my life. Okay. I come from a very poor home. Food was something that we were raised practically on, uh, I would say, uh, bread and potatoes. A piece of meat was a luxury, a piece of cake was a luxury. Uh, candy, once in a while I got a candy. What kind did you like? What? What kind did you like? Candy. It's been so long, God, I don't you know, remember. It. Okay. <laughs> Any kind of candy was <laughs> tastes good, it didn't matter. I was very particular about what kind of candy, as long as I could get it. I know how that is. <laughs> and uh, my father uh, had all different kinds of jobs. He ran a mikvah, which is a ritual, a ritual bath that the uh, Jewish people, before the Sabbath, they go and they just like, has to be water that is filtered from a well, not from pipes, like we have it here. And they, what they do is they go, they get into it and they just like emerge, submerge. Uh, three times, and that makes them like they're cleansed for the for the Sabbath. Women do that too, uh, you know, and so he learned that on Fridays. Thursdays he went out and he caught fish. Unlike here, where you go and you throw a fishing rod and you catch a fish or, mm -hmm. or, or nets, and it's usually in oceans in large waters. There, there were, we had a lot of ponds. And we used to go there on Thursday and used to catch those fish. Primarily carp. It was very popular. And he brought them home and uh, he set the near a little stream and made sure that those fish are alive. Because once they died, they were half price. Here we don't buy live fish. We buy them after the dead already. Mm -hmm. There they had to be alive. And um, Friday morning, my mother was selling it, and my father was in the so-called the ritual bed, heating the water. During the week, he did all kinds of jobs to make a little money to keep us going. I started school when I was Hebrew school when I was five years old. It was for me the whole time throughout my until the war began. It was school, school, and school. Morning, noon, and night. Uh, every day from the first three grades, I had 
public school in the afternoon and Hebrew school in the morning. And after the fourth, fifth, and sixth grades, it reversed. Public school in the morning and Hebrew school in the afternoon. Sunday, when there was no public school, we had Hebrew school all day. Okay. So really, there was never any time that we I could go out and play. Matter of fact, I still don't know how to swim because, first of all, there was no, there were no waters to really to go out of swimming pools. But even if I had to, there was no place to go. We had a little stream, was maybe six, eight feet wide in some areas. Some areas was even less. So I remember when I was a little boy, we used to go in there and uh, used to, uh, when we had a little time, and just go in there, took our clothes off, dropped it, and just ran in and came out and went home. Um, the clothes that I had, uh, unlike here, clothes were always made custom made. The tailor made the suits, the shoemaker made the shoes, and then there was a, the, the shirts were hand, uh, handmade, everything was handmade. And in order for me to get a piece of clothes after I was about eight, nine years old, I had to earn it. I had to go out and do push cards. The merchants that they needed some flowers, a bag of flowers. I went to the mill and got a bag of flowers and pushed the cart and brought it. So I used to get like a nickel or a dime. And I saved it and to have some money. In the summertime, actually around Passover, which is around April, May, I took off my shoes and didn't put them on until the fall, except for the Sabbath, because to save the shoes and uh, that's how we lived. Uh, life was uh, a very, very hard in a small town. There are, were some people that uh, had, a little, had a lot better than I did, but for me it was, uh, wasn't easy. We had a reunion from my town in F Miami Beach about 22 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we got together, of course, we hadn't seen each other for so many years, we were little. The war broke out, I was 13. And uh, there were two girls, and we introduced ourselves, everybody introduced, I'm so-and-so from, and uh, there were two sisters, there, and they said, well, we are, I forgot the name, we are from, we had that little ice cream stand. And uh, she says, the kid, when the kids used to come there, their tongues used to hang out. And I said, that was one of those kids. <laughs> because ice cream was something I didn't get. Mm -hmm. uh, a fruit, if I saw a tree, and I was lucky enough, a uh, fruit fell down, I got it. My parents could afford it. We take a lot of things here for granted. We don't know really what poverty is. Uh, butter, we took them, we went to the farmer and got the milk. Because of dietary laws, we used our own pots. And we brought home the milk, and my mother boiled it, and then we took skimmed off the top, and we used it for butter. It's when I hear people talk about poverty, I say to myself, they don't know what poverty is. Really, it's it's. Uh, at uh, seven years old, I started public school. We in Poland, we started at seven, here at six. I never walked to school. Because again, they taught the, those the Christians taught their kids to throw rocks. I think before they taught them how to walk. They used to the all the Jews lived in the urban area because of the being afraid to live on the outskirts. We had we were better targets for them, whether to harass us or burn us down or beat us or throw rocks or whatever. We lived among us our own, we were felt a little safer. Every home had shutters because again for fear they might throw rocks through the window and such. And it was permissible, the police looked away. It wasn't a law that you can do it like the Nazis did. But if I went to complain, I complained to say to that policeman that his kid probably threw the rocks. And when I started school every Day I had to I walk I didn't walk to school I ran because it was a little bit on the outskirt of the, of the town the village we only had one school it's a small town and 
And once I got into the classroom, I would never leave because we did not have any indoor plumbing. We had outhouses. And we did not have any paved playgrounds. They were dirt playgrounds. And if I would go out there, they either would throw a handful of dirt in my face or a rock or something. So I was scared to go out. Once I got in that classroom, no matter how badly I needed to go, I would not go out. And then after class, it was just that you could see the Jewish kids were the first ones to get out, to run, run home. Uh, I don't know, it's a, uh, it was tough, it was tough. So was everybody pretty much separated? There wasn't really anybody that actually, for lack of a better way to say it, knew how to act towards Jewish people? Was there anybody that was actually kind and friends uh, with them? I, I am not saying that they all were that way. Okay. Unfortunately, I never met one. No. I, I'm sure there were some that, there were some that didn't carry it away. Some maybe had some sympathy, but I never met one. I, I cannot go and say they were, but I can't say they weren't either. Right. Yeah. So I don't want to lump everybody into one, paint with one, with one brush. Right. But uh, uh, I, I, I don't know of any of them. Okay. Um, so when you did go outside and have a little bit of free time, what did you do? Just mainly well, I didn't have time. Not at all? It was never, never okay. any time. The only time we had was Saturday afternoon. Okay. But if you're observant, you cannot do a lot, of, you cannot go out and play. It's just forbidden. The, the, the Jewish a religion forbids you to do anything that isn't, that's work, and playing is work. So we went out there, we went out, and this is when my parents took a nap in the afternoon. Uh, because they, during the week, they, um, they worked very, very hard, didn't have time. And on Saturday afternoon, after we had dinner, came home from the synagogue, and my parents came home from the synagogue, I went to Hebrew school, I came home, we had dinner, and then we went out a little bit, and they were, they, and they took a nap. Uh, we lived in a home, we had, uh, in the beginning, I remember when I was a little boy, we had one room. I don't know how many of us were there, how many were born already then. But uh, before the war, we, uh, our apartment was consistent of two rooms. My whole life, my whole childhood, I never slept, I had, I never had, not only did I have my own room, I never had my own bed. We were teamed up, paired up, two of us. I was always sleeping with my father and my two brothers together, and one of my sisters and my mother, and two sisters. We had two rooms and four beds. And we did not have mattresses like we have here. Matter of fact, even today, whenever I go in, in the bed, as I do every night, I just stretch out and pull the covers over my, up to my chin and just feel stretch out, feel so good about it. Because something I never had for so many years, especially <coughs> especially during the war. Yeah. So uh, uh, I know my father used to come uh, Friday night after we had dinner, came from the services. He had these stoves made out of tile and what did is we put in some, we heat it, we burn some uh, coal and put some coal in and they and close it tight. So it just smoldered for quite a while. And they used to, uh, the tile used to warm up and that's how we heated that one particular room. So we used to sit there for an hour or two, whatever. That was his only pleasure probably, relaxation that he had is to sit there and just have a little a shot of, of vodka and sit there and just warm his bones. And it was a, something that uh, he did every Friday night. So your family was very religious? Right? Yes, we were yeah. very religious. We are, uh, very, my parents were very, very observant. Uh, I, uh, are you Jewish? Anybody? Yeah. You Jew are you Jewish? Yeah. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, yeah, I'm just asking, you know, uh, religious, the food that we have here 
in the stores, even though it was the K and the U and all of that, mm -hmm. my parents would not eat. It wasn't kosher enough. Do I need to tell you anymore? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, they were very observant, and uh, we, they observed to a T. Uh, before Passover, it took my mother about six weeks to clean the two rooms, make sure there's no crumb there. And uh, I don't know, it's the memories I have from childhood, having parents, caring and loving parents. But other than that, there really was no, uh, there was nothing that I can really say something great happened to me. Never played with them, toys were non-existent. We had one bike, and my older brother, he was in charge. So in order to get permission from him, I could have gotten to closer to God and get to him to allow me to ride a bike. Uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, I have never done that, talk about uh, the, my childhood. I am much better at talking about because I've been I've done it so many times about the war years. Right. Uh, I don't know whether you consider the childhood before the war or for or as long as I was home with my family together. But I, I can I really can't say that there was a childhood uh, and, and I don't mean my parents did everything they could with what they had. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't have much. I just had very little. What? And there are so many things that <coughs> kid, kids here take for granted. I, I wish that I could go into every child's mind and tell them how lucky they are, how fortunate they are. Not only being born here, but also for having what they have. It's just unbelievable. Uh, you say you had three brothers and three sisters, did you we say? We were three brothers and three sisters. Okay. What were they My like? father was, uh, was born in 1900. I don't know the date. My mother was born in 1902. In Europe, we were all born in, in homes, and we had midwives. And what happened there was that, the, at least where I come from, what happened there is the parents, after they had their families established, they went down to City Hall and registered. And when I said to you in the beginning that I have three birthdays, I do. Uh, I thought my birthday was February 28, 1926, which makes me 78 at the end of this month. As a matter of fact, this past, this next weekend. And I went back to Europe and I found a birth certificate where it's January 25th, 1925. I can't be that day of birthday because my sister was born 24. They're all two years apart. And uh, then after the war, my brother made me younger. Instead of being 19, he made me 16 because I was as close to dying as anyone could be and still be here to talk about it. So he made me younger so I could be a, a get some medical assistance. So he made me October the 1st, 1928. So whenever anybody says, when you're born, I always tell him, Whenever you want to, I have a birthday coming up, you can give me a present. It's <laughs> <laughs> good as me. So, uh, with Social Security, I'm older, with the dri my driver's license, I'm younger, and somewhere in between, I think I am the right birthday. So. But it's only a birthday. Interesting. Um, did you have a favorite holiday? The favorite holiday, it's customary in Jewish religion that for Passover you get a new garment. And 
branches around Julius, Jewish New Year, you also get a new garment of some sort. It makes you feel that you are, I don't know, makes you feel good. It's, it's a custom, it's a tradition. Uh, not here, here you go out and buy something when you need it. We could not do that. But we bought when we had a little money or just to have so that we can uh, be able to show our friends or neighbors or family that we are somehow not rich, but we are in, in style. No, the, the, well, I guess if there's a favorite holiday, it would be Hanukkah because uh, you got a little gift and it wasn't a gift like here with toys or money, uh, maybe money candy, right. things yeah. like that. And we used to sit there and play the dreidel and we'll explain it uh, later what a dreidel is. Oh, I know what it is. I've <laughs> got one in my coat pocket that yeah. I never put yeah, away. Except we didn't have it. <laughs> I was wearing a Hebrew, the Hebrew letters only. So it's, uh, but that's about the only time we had a, it. It was a customary in you know, Purim, which is coming up, <coughs> to give gifts. And uh, there were a lot of uh, dirty tricks played on that holiday, <laughs> giving gifts. If you didn't like someone, what you did, and I, I know that people have done it. What they did is they took a box and put a couple of mice in and set it up with that. <laughs> and they opened up the box and bowed it. <laughs> uh -huh. There was a little humor, too. There was a lot yeah. of humor, too, because we didn't know any better. What we did not have also, is, uh, which is very important, we did not have the communications that we have here today. We, I had not seen a newspaper until um, after the war. I didn't know what that meant. There was one radio in town, and uh, when the war broke out, we went to listen to the radio. It was a drugstore. We had one drugstore, and he had a, a speaker outside, and we listened to it. I didn't, but anybody that wanted to. Uh, we did not have any indoor plumbing. It was outhouses. Uh, we had one bulb in, in each room, a little bulb, and that only, we got that around 19, I don't know, I guess, 36, 37. Before that, we had these lanterns, you know, with uh, cursing. Um, we did not have any gas, as we have here. And we, uh, of course, there were no cars. There were a couple buses in town that, that I know that they used to go from one city to the other, but mainly, they used to have these uh, horse and wagons that people used to get on and go from one place to the other instead of as for transportation. Yeah. In the winter, there were no cars, no nothing, no buses. It was all this horse and wagon or sleighs. They used to uh, transport them with that a lot. Um, I don't know what else I can talk about. <coughs> Um, have any other questions? We've got a lot. Um, what were your brothers and sisters' names? Birthdays? My, I don't know the birthdays, I know the okay. years. My brother was, we were all two years apart. Okay. So my brother was born in 1922. His name is Sam. The English name is Sam. My sister, he's alive. He's in Florida. My sister's name is Gussie. She's 24. Matter of fact, we're so close together. Our birthday, at least we think we do. Mine is February 28th. Hers is March, March the 1st. This year is two years apart. Otherwise, we're just one, one day, I mean, two days apart. Uh, this year, and, but otherwise, we're one day apart. But two years old, uh, different. Then I had a brother of mine. He was. He was born in 1928. His name is, I guess, would be Joseph. His name is Yosef. And then I had a sister. She was born in 1930 and born in 1932. Um, over there, the pictures. Uh, 
bring, bring those pictures up. Bring that down, and I want to show you. So you, you take that. Bring it up. Here are the pictures of my parents. These are the last pictures. The only thing I have, any visual thing, and my two sisters, and one, and my younger, my two younger sisters, and my younger brothers, and all five perished in the Holocaust. My father was forty. Two, the last time I saw him, my mother was 40, and my younger brother was 14, and the two sisters were 12 and 10. Um, What were your sisters' names again? Did you tell us their names? Or? Cassie and the two little ones I didn't tell you. Okay. One was Charnia. Okay. C H A R N I A. And the little one was Brando. B R A N D L. Something like that. <laughs> it's, it's a Jewish name. and the, the, Um, so you went to both Hebrew school and public school? Yes. Okay. Um, I went to Hebrew school and public school, and of course both of them ended for me in 1939 when the war broke out. Okay. I did not, I, that's when my education ended. In, in Poland there wasn't like here you, education was very important. It was not in those days. Uh, my parents planned for me when I was probably born. My brother, my older brother, was a tailor. He he uh, studied uh, tailoring, <coughs> and uh, I was supposed to be a furrier. That they were hoping someday we can both merge and help up a little business. And my younger brother was supposed to be a shoemaker, because he never had the opportunity. None of us did. Parents planned, but somehow it never worked out. Uh, I don't know. Um, did you have any friends in the uh, neighborhood? I had some friends, but they weren't like, again, <coughs> here, you have, you have time to go out to do things with friends. Yes, I had that, uh, some friends that are, it was more of a, uh, a acquaintances because we didn't have time to spend, we didn't have any time to spend the time together. We didn't play. The only thing we used to do was go to each other's home and do some homework. And we had plenty of that because when Hebrew and public school, we always had homework. We didn't come home. I didn't come home. Sunday I was started. He was school started from eight to ten. Came home had an hour. Then an hour at time because we had our dinners in Europe. Dinner is noontime, lunchtime, rather than unlike here. It's better because you don't go to sleep with a full stomach. And then we went back to school. He uh, was school at three thirty. Didn't get home until seven. So what time did you have? Did we have? There was no time. And then Monday morning, both Hebrew and, and public school. We did not have any Hebrew school on Friday, but we did have some on <coughs> Saturday and all day Sunday. So our schedule was always full of learning, studying, and Hebrew school isn't easy. Of course, no school is easy, but when you have to have both two of them. We have a lot of homework to do, and we didn't have computers. Uh oh. <laughs> so, uh, but somehow we managed. We survived. That isn't a big city. 
in the small city. Big city was a different life. There were more, there were people, who there were some professionals, there were a lot of uh, merchants, and there were, a lot, uh, so the, there wasn't as much poverty in the bigger city as there was in small town. It was a bigger variety of places that you could go and find work, where in the small town we were very limited. So we had, so like my father, he had no profession. He had to take whatever was available to him, and there wasn't much available. Did you feel like there you liked Hebrew school or public school, one of them better than the other, or were they just kind of? Mm, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember it was, it, it was instilled in us, education, that when we were born, that uh, our parents said, as I did with my children, and they were born not planned for them what they're going to do. They're going to get an education. That when they are finished high school, they're going to